The whole world is watching this hoax. You got a DA that's out of control. You have a judge that's highly conflicted. The whole thing is a mess, and you have the leading candidate and leading crooked Joe Biden by law. He's the one that should be in trial. He's a crook, but he's the one in charge. His top people are here working with the DA's office to make sure everything goes right. But it shouldn't go right because they have no case. You can't gag this man. Trump continues to pummel this absolutely ridiculous case, walking out of day three of jury selection, sifting through a bunch of news articles and op-eds that showcase the political assault on justice that we're seeing right now. As of now, all 12 jurors have been seated for this trial, but you'd have to be, frankly, delusional to think that this is going to be some kind of a fair trial. This morning, two who were seated yesterday were dismissed. They're trying to give an appearance of fairness. Juror number four, who said initially that he just found Trump fascinating and mysterious. Oh, well, he was dismissed for reportedly being arrested in the 90s for ripping down conservative political posters. So uh, he clearly lied, marginalized his political hatred for the right, and tried to get on the jury, which, of course, is what so many people in this jury pool are going to do. They're going to try to get on this jury. Juror number two who said her main source of news was CNN and the New York Times, recused herself after telling the judge she was afraid outside influences would affect her and was scared of being identified. She said that her friends figured out who she was, just based off the media reporting of the details about her. As of this morning, more than 50 potential jurors were dismissed. 50, after admitting they could not be fair and impartial. So who's made it on the jury at this point? Well, clearly the best actors have made it on. In Manhattan, every single person knows who Donald Trump is. Nine out of ten did not vote for him. And believe me when I tell you, as somebody that lives here, a vast majority of them would love to see this man behind bars, whether he committed a crime or not. That's the truth about the jury pool that Trump is facing in this felony trial. Scary. Laura Trump joins us now. Good to have you back on. Um, their defiance to, at the very least, move this ridiculous trial somewhere else um, makes it very clear that they have a mission and they're sticking to the mission, doesn't it? Yeah, well, they know, Rob, if they actually move this trial to any other area of this country, maybe save for like a San Francisco of sorts, yeah. you would possibly get a fair trial. And let alone, this wouldn't even see the light of day. You have to think about the fact that this is a case where they're alleging that there was some sort of an accounting Error. There was somebody who wrote down in an accounting ledger the wrong information. And that is why they are holding hostage Donald Trump, the former president and current Republican nominee, in a courtroom. This has never been about anything that is fair. We all know that. This yeah. is about making sure that they can keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail. This is about making sure that for any American who might think about voting for him, hey, you better think twice. Here's a picture of Donald Trump in a courtroom. And yeah, if they could throw him in jail and lock him up, great. That's what they're all gunning for. But you see the way that people are responding here, Rob. Right. The American people are not buying it. The campaign in the three days that Donald Trump has been forced to sit in that courtroom raised $3 million, $26 yeah. increments and in those donations. It means people are behind him and they're not buying it. No, they're not buying it. And, and, and the fact that they only get that, that the Trump side only gets 10 strikes with the jury pool that they currently have, only, only 10, 10 strikes. I mean, there's... They're going to need way more than that, at the very least. I mean, they, they, they can't get any breaks in this thing. And you know when it, when it becomes very obvious in this moment is when people that don't like Trump are calling it out. And right. Bill Barr does not like Donald Trump. And he says the case is an abomination. He calls it obviously political, pointing out the timing of the prosecution uh, some seven years later, right at the peak you know, they, they plan it so it just comes right up here as we're moving into the spring and into the summer before an election. I mean, if Bill Barr is calling that out, that means something. Yeah, you have Bill Barr, you have Stephen A. Smith calling it out. You have people who are looking at this yep. and are smart enough to realize the implications of something like this for the future of our country. Because this, if this is the precedent we are setting right now, if we're saying, hey, we're just going to change the law whenever it's convenient for us and whenever we can attack a political opponent with it, then think about what that means for the future of this country. Yeah, it's sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows right now for the Democrats because they're the ones in charge and they're the ones pulling the string and it's Donald Trump forced to sit in a courtroom right now.